let me ask you a few questions. How many of you survived a fatal accident? How many of you had a handicapped family member? How many of you had abusive parents? How many of you went bankrupt and lost everything, including the house you lived in, at the age of 25? How many of you survived all aforementioned traumas? Well, I did. Let me explain. This is my story. A bit tragic, a bit magic, but unique and authentic. I grew up in a family which has never been a real family to me. I'm saying to me because somehow the rest has an understanding with each other, except me. There were days I deliberately did silly things to get some more attention. When it was my turn to speak, somebody always shut me up because I was a girl. I spent days months, years, feeling weird, isolated. Until the day my brother was born. The times that I spent with my brother were the best times of the day. After school, I was taking care of him because he was born sick and he spent most of his life in the hospitals. He had a severe form of Down syndrome. He never walked, never talked, never did the things other children do. He did one thing in his short life. He laughed and he loved, no matter what. He was happy when I was around. He made me feel happy. He made me feel loved and accepted. There were two real things in my life back then. My brother's unconditional love and books, all the books in the world, all the stories. I kept dreaming of taking my brother to a playground to have fun, play, run. Unfortunately, this never happened. He died at the age of 18 from a heart attack. Today and every day, I still feel strongly connected to my brother. Trying to find little happy things in life, I really had to be careful reading books, listening to music, hanging out with friends, were strictly forbidden because I was a girl. Growing up in a conservative community doesn't give you much chance to explore your authentic self. But somehow, I was a very social kid at school. My teachers were proud of me. They were encouraging me to do great things. Apparently, they saw something that I never saw in me back then. I was a star, a winner. Truly authentic, kind of cool. At home, I was trying to be invisible to avoid any conflict with my family. I was hiding my books. I was never sharing my accomplishments. I remember once I wrote a theater play and my father didn't let me go to the rehearsals because I was a girl. But what did I do? I went secretly. 
And then I was chosen as the lead singer for the school party. And this time, my mother didn't let me go to the rehearsals because there were boys. But what did I do? I went secretly and I sang my songs. I found a way out because there is always a way out. Even if you think you are completely lost, even if you write hundreds of times, I wish I was dead, I wish I was dead, I wish I was dead in your diary, there is a way out. My way out was studying in a different city. I went to a big city and things changed quickly in my life. That freedom and being alive gave me some self-confidence boost. I was finally becoming myself. At least I was allowing to be who I was. But being traumatized is not like catching a cold. You live your life under the influence of your traumas and you make decisions under the influence of your traumas. Accepting myself with all the wounds and scratches in my soul took a long time. But I did it. It's worth it. After my studies, I never returned home. I stayed in the big city. I became a teacher. And as a kid, if you believe you don't deserve being happy, this feeling follows you. And this time, I was punishing myself, working overtime and getting no recognition. Apparently, this was a pattern from my childhood. Once I had a discussion with a colleague, I felt so frustrated. I felt so broken. I literally collapsed. I hit the bottom. I guess this was the only way to go up because I finally found the strength to listen to my inner child. And I quit that job for a better one. I'm so glad I did. I have to admit, working with children was kind of liberating. But the turning point was not working with children. The turning point was working for my inner child, getting back to my authentic self, by doing the things that I like doing, by reading, acting, singing, dancing. My authentic self, my inner child, is my essential nature. When you turn to your authentic self, you see things differently. It's a shift of mindset. It turns negative reality into clarity and offers simple solutions. Let's try something. Let's say you had a problem with a friend. You felt betrayed. And your friend acts like nothing happened. He even invited you to his birthday party. What do you do? A, I go and I act like nothing happened as well. B, I go and I beat him in front of everyone. See, I don't go, but I send him a long emotional message about what he did. D, I just say no and keep watching TikTok videos. <laughs> well, in the past, I was mostly A, B, C. But now, I choose D, no matter what. I don't push myself to find excuses for other people's mistakes. I accept it and move forward. Being vulnerable because of your past traumas is not a weakness. I embrace my each traumatic experience with love. I put a bandage on it. I accept that I am who I am. Struggling with everyday problems? Yes, yes, of course but I can control my reactions to those problems. In those moments, I turn to my inner child and she says, 
This is your captain speaking. I'm in charge of this whole situation right now. <laughs> I choose kindness. I choose playfulness. I choose pink dreams, little happy things in life. I choose a happy, simple life with my family, with my children, with my dog. And I let my inner child be my guide. <sighs> so, when was the last time you let your inner child guide you? <laughs>